we'll be working on a poncho and it's a very interesting design this particular poncho because it's made in such a way that it will be an asymmetrical look when you finish it now we'll be using this loom which is the 62 peg loom because the measurements of the poncho are 22 by 50 so we'll have to use all the pegs on the 62 peg loom because it's 22 inches and we will have to work for 50 inches after we have gotten the 22 by 50 we will fold it in half and that will give you a 22 by 25 and you will seam it along here for 13 inches leaving a 12 inch gap and with this gap we will do a cow collar um, cow neck um, for the poncho of about 8 inches the poncho will be worked in the hard stitch the poncho will be worked in two colors we're going to alternate them every two rows this kind of um, it's actually a green you know it doesn't really look nice let me see if I can get the green color it looks turquoise but it isn't actually it's um greenish blue sea green more and then we have the other this is actually blue light blue you know and um, the thread is five to six millimeter hook or crochet needles and um, we'll be using the hard stitch and we'll be working it on the 22 inch loom as I mentioned earlier however I'm going to demonstrate the hard stitch on the loom this loom using um, I won't be using all the stitch all the pegs you know because I want to demonstrate the stitch and what you need to do is do it over all of the loom so I'll demonstrate the stitch on just a few pegs this way I can show you how it looks very quickly actually you can use this loom but then what will happen is that you won't get a 22 inch um, side you know because this one needs a 22 inch side unless of course you do it 9 19 and then you extend it using some other method and then all and then you join it up again you do another three inches in um, 450 but that doesn't really actually it doesn't really work out you see uh, so you'll have to just end up with a shorter um, poncho I don't know whether it's really feasible for you to do that you know if you try to do it with this loom so instead I'm just going to demonstrate to you the stitch okay let's do the, our adjustable knot I'll put it here now the first row we're just going to cast on as you're well aware we'll do only a few pegs huh? okay I'm just demonstrating the stitch and then you will work it for the rest of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll do it for 10 um, stitches. But of course you have to work it for the whole loom. Huh? I'm just demonstrating how the stitch will look. So let's do the cast on row. I'm hoping that using those two colors will make it look nice but except that it doesn't come out very clearly in the video that we are actually using two different colors you know one's green has a green hue and the other is more bluish 
all right now the heart stitch is done this way okay you place your you hold your yarn in the other hand and place it in front like this just in front then you go under underneath the stitch that is already there and you pick it up like this and then you put it over all right do that again There's a video on the internet, you know, it's, um, this stitch was created by Teresa Higby. Basically, actually, you're not moving at all. Eh? This row, you will not advance in, in length because you're just, you're not working the stitch at all. You're just um, fattening it up, you know. Put it over. Okay. Hope you can see that. It creates a very interesting effect, you know, because when you when you purl over like that, it's called purl over, that's what Teresa calls it, you know. Ah, No, I'm clumsy with this stitch because the um, first time I'm working it, I haven't gotten used to the stitch yet. I presume when you get the hang of it, you can do it a little faster. Otherwise, it's going to take ages to do 50 inches. Now the last stitch here, because these stitches don't actually advance it in uh, length, you know, doesn't really work because the original stitch is still there, you know. You have to e-wrap and knit off the last stitch. If you don't do that, this part will become narrower, it will become shorter and shorter and it will pull onto one side, you know. It will have an odd look to the whole, it won't be even, it won't come out straight, you know. Because of the fact that um, this last stitch will become shorter. And since the next row, when you work the E-wrap, you will not be working this stitch. It will consistently become smaller, the, the side, you know. So it will start pulling onto one side when you are working it. Okay, so now we E-wrap this again. This row, just E-wrap. This row is faster, but consider the fact that the, the the row that you work the heart, you will not be getting any increases. So you actually will be doubling your work. Huh? Just a warning. So this is not going to be one of those fast projects, you know, where you find yourself finishing the the piece that you're working on very quickly. That isn't going to happen. All right now back again same thing place it in front go under pull it and place it on top under over place it on top and uh, pull 
place it on top don't make it too snug eh? pull it slightly but don't make it too tight if you make it too tight the next row will be difficult for you to knit off when you come to your e-wrap row When Teresa Higby was um, demonstrating this particular stitch, eh, she had a cat, you know, and the cat kept swishing its tail over the video. It was kind of cute. See, it gives a quite a tight end, you know. So for a poncho, it's pretty good because then, you know, you'll get a, a, a warmer poncho because it would be a bit more dense, you know, the stitches. Okay, and the last one, remember not to work it, but to do an e-wrap knit. Okay, there. See? Well, you can't see anything yet, but um, it's slowly coming out on the other side. Alright, now back again. The e-wrap knit. Okay, I'll do a few more rows and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I thought I'd show it to you. I took it off the loom. Okay, so use it so that you can see the actual heart shape, you know, of the stitches. They're kind of precious, these, the stitch. It looks very precious. It's kind of nice. And you notice how very dense the back is. If you don't want this side to show... If you want this part to be the front of the poncho, also you can do that, you know, because it gives a totally different back, you know, it's a much more tighter weave, you know. So you can also use this as the front of the poncho. But it's a lot of work, you know, I must admit. Kind of daunting. I wanted to tell you that I've made a few changes. Firstly, I decided that because my yarn was too thick, I won't be using the long loom for this pattern for myself. Of course, the finished uh, poncho will be 19 inches here instead of the 22. And I intend to extend it either using the traditional knitting needles or crochet a rib. You can do a crochet rib, you know. Um, I can show you how to do it later. But then I was um, struck by someone's comment on one of my videos where... She said that most people take up loom knitting because they don't really actually want to knit or crochet or don't know how to knit or crochet the traditional way. And um, therefore any of my patterns, you know, where I'm mixed and matching the handwork together with the loom may not actually work for a lot of people, you see. So if that is the case, then I strongly suggest that you use the long loom to do this pattern and use a thinner yarn. Because I, for my yarn and my purposes, I won't be able to do the pattern with the 22-inch um, loom because the loom pegs are too narrow. I need these fat pegs for the type of yarn I'm using, you know, because my yarn is almost um, 5 to 6 millimeter crochet and knitting hook, you know. And the other thing I wanted to point out was that towards the uh, to show you also how to change colors 
when I put in the blue, I just uh, used the slip knot on top of it and did. But when you come to change the next, um, when you come back here to change the sea green, you have to twist it around the blue before you start working with it. Now, I want to show you that part on how to change colors on the loom, you know. Now, I'm here and uh, let me just finish this row and i also wanted to point out another thing that is important when you're working with this pattern my right hand is very tired and you know i've got tendonitis so i am forcing my left hand to do this which is not very good because it's very slow already this stitch is a bit cumbersome now with this um, my right hand giving me problems i'm forced to use my left it's taking even longer now like I said earlier, the last stitch uh, you will have to, this is the last stitch, uh, you have to knit it. So do it immediately, you know, because otherwise there is a possibility you may forget and you may do the heart stitch, the pearl over on that stitch too, which would be a disaster. Because once you make a mistake, you'll have to come and take everything off again, you know, because it will start getting shorter and shorter on one side, you know. And the other thing is, usually I don't do this, you know. I don't immediately wind all the pegs. I never do this. I always um, do a few pegs and then I do the rest of it as I wor work along after I do a few. But I noticed that in this one, I keep on pulling out the stitches that are already on the peg without the other thread being already e-wrapped around the other the top of the peg you see so i'm losing stitches so as a result i don't know i don't know maybe this particular pattern is a bit uh, has uh, completely got my rhythm off sync you know so after this la this last row we will be doing the color change you know and i also wanted to show you that okay so we go back and we knit over all the Try and wrap loosely here, yeah? but um, for the heart shape stitch itself, try and make it a little snug, but not tight. Eh? Don't make it tight. If you make it tight, you will have a great deal of difficulty doing the next stitch. Just a little snug, not too loose, that's all. Because I'm my my right hand the elbow is always giving me problems, you know. Old age <laughs> not the best thing. Like my friend says, you know. She says, um, she's sixty over years old and she always tells me every morning I wake up and I am uh, welcomed with a new pain to my body. I'm always being treated to different parts of my body, telling me that it's breaking down as she puts it. And she says, you know, I'm grateful I'm able to still walk around. It's true. But I guess, you know, um, some of us do well at older ages, so they are quite well preserved, you know. But people, some others are not like that. Get all the aches and pains. You can hardly get out of bed in the morning. So bad. Oh, well. At least keep yourself busy, as they say. And um, as you grow older, you really appreciate all the facts that your body still can function. All right, now, see, we are going to do the change in color. This color, we're going to take it. Okay, here, this one, we're going to take this color. What you need to do is, you have to twist it around the other one. Twist it around the other Immediately work the heart stitch pearl over. After you've twisted it, make sure you've twisted it round the other other peg here. See, it's twisted. It's not sorry over the other color. The yarn of the other color. You twist the the one that you're going to be using now over that, and then you continue working
if you want the 22 inches which i strongly recommend because the poncho would look so much better when it's 22 instead of 19 please use the long loom eh? it's just that the thread i'm using is just unsuitable for that loom see how much better the the hard shape looks on this loom because the this particular yarn is more suited for this for this loom than, than it was for the long loom although when i worked the cardigan i used the same thread but because the cardigan i worked it in twisted stocking net you know so it was all right see that and then you continue working the pearl overs see just pull it slightly only don't pull it too tight And then continue changing colors as you go. You can do it whatever measurements you want. Huh? If you don't want it even, you can uh, cut cut the thread and make one part longer or however you want to run the, the color changes is up to you. This is um, the heart stitch. You can see it quite clearly now no? with the color changes. It's actually quite a pretty stitch, you know. And the wonderful thing is that the back stitch is also lovely, you know. I can't even decide which side I want to use actually. Both sides are really nice looking. In fact, this is actually quite lovely, you know. Except that this stitch is a bit of a tediousness to work, you know. And oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to remind you, when you do the um, changes uh, for the thread, make sure you don't pull the... the floating thread you know the one when you whenever you exchange the colors and don't pull it too tight if you pull it too tight and this whole thing will start going like this you know try and make sure that you don't pull the whenever you change the color the part where the thread leaves off and then starts the new row here you mustn't pull this strand too hard you know leave it quite loose i thought you'd like to compare the heart, uh, the heart stitch with the stocking net stitch. See, stocking net, heart. As you can see, the bumps are very, very clear. Whereas this is a very smooth stitch, you know, in comparison to this. There's a clear difference between these two stitches. And if you look at the back, this one looks very messy, you know. But this is very nice, though. It's got a very nice um, finish at the back. It's actually quite a lovely back. Really, must be something that I might consider using. I've just measured this, and unfortunately, it is sitting at eighteen. That means I'm going to be four inches short on this pattern. I won't have uh, enough uh, because I'm supposed to get 22. I was hoping I would at least get 20. But this particular stitch, these heart uh, stitches <coughs> are tightening the general loom. You know, Because when I use the um, chunky yarn, I noticed that the overall piece went up to about 20 and a half like that but this one is exactly 18 
which was the original whenever i do some of the work i always give 18 as the gauge for this particular loom you know but it has been known to go up to 19 when you kind of knit a bit loosely you know but this one is no because of the way that the stitches are it only gives you 18 inches 18 inches means i will have to, so what i've decided is that i'm going to do a two inch here extra and another two inch here i will contrast one with the light blue and the other with the sea green um colors two inches and two inches so it'll have a border both sides you know of single crochet now if you, i've already told you that because most those of you who don't wish to do single crochet if you want to do this pattern just stick to the um long loom you know the long loom will give you a 22 inch uh, width so you don't have to worry about that you know and as i told you this is hard going eh? it's very slow i have not done much as you can see and over a few days it's like i can't even manage five inches a day it's so slow and mind you i work on this you know i mean well in between all my video games and other stuff my korean drama fetish but anyway um so what i wanted to tell you is that if you are going to do this stick to the long loom don't do what i'm doing because at the end of it i'll show you how to make this up but uh, you don't have to do the single crochet borders that i'll be adding to this because i'm using the long loom sorry the round loom and the round loom only gives me 18 inches so stick to the long loom okay um remember when i told you about the 22 inch loom in comparison to the round loom and how each of the resulting finished pieces would look different also the length well when i measured the final piece after i taken it off the loom i only got 17 inches because i think these hard stitches are really tight you know so you don't even get 18 on the round loom so i really suggest very strongly for you to use the long loom but there is a benefit towards doing single crochet to finish up I'm because I'm using single crochet to get the extra length you know so I'll be adding uh, two and a half inches in single crochet on each side one will be done in the sea green and the other in the light blue shade you know that was here so I'm gonna do it that way but I just wanted to point out something you know for each of the floating stitches that are along here see when you pick up the stitches to do the single crochet as you're doing them you need to you need to do this you see here are all the floating stitches you know can you see them these are all the floating stitches you know the one from the color uh, changes you know every time you change a color there will be a floating thread you know at the back the yarn will float at the back you know <clears throat> this is the way that you do fair isle actually floating yarn now see with this method you can actually hide it you know see i've done the single crochet all along here and you have i've completely hidden all the floats you know they no longer appear see when you pick up the stitch the next single crochet you make sure you pick up the float this is the float here go underneath it and then pick the two strands then you do your single crochet go underneath it pick the next stitch and finish it like that <coughs> also to eliminate the curls two things huh? you can either start with a garter stitch of about uh, maybe five rows you do one roll of uh, knit one roll of pearl so that the top and the bottom will not curl i of course have finished it with the uh, single crochet the single crochet stitches look very much like the hard stitch so it there's no noticeable difference here you know and also i added in the rows you know so that they look like a continuation of the pattern you can do two pearls for every end instead of doing that the hard stitch and then a um hard stitch and then a knit that is a twisted stocking net you instead do two pearls at the end this will actually prevent the ends from curling two sides you know 
but then I sincerely because of the floating stitches here I seriously suggest that you do a couple of rows of uh, single crochet to eliminate the floats and also to straighten out the edges you know see it's much better like this you see look at that and plus it gives you this border you know but then it's up to you like if you don't want to do any crochet then by all means use the 22 inch loom make sure you do two pearls every time you end when at the beginning and at the end at the beginning here two pearls and then in between you do all the hard stitches and then you end also with two pearls this way the two ends will not curl inwards you know they won't they won't do this you see this one is doing that can you see that it's curling and for here to prevent the top and the bottom curl you do the garter stitch now you get the measurements 22 by 50 fold it in half so that you will have 25 this way and seam up for 13 inches here leaving a 12 inch gap which you hook back onto the 36 pack loom now here this seam here you use whatever stitch you are comfortable with you know and this part will be open this part will be open this is where the fold is after you have joined the side as required here here you join up the side no 13 inches we're leaving a gap of 12 inches you take the 12 inches using the the loom of the 36 peg loom with the wrong side inside and the right side outside from this angle you hook back the neck onto the loom and work a knit to pearl to rib when you hook up the thing put it on four corners first and then on regular intervals around the loom this way you get a an even collar and work a knit to pearl to rib for eight inches as you can see here you will have to skip some of the stitches you know you can't fit every single stitch into this 36 pack loom that's why i asked you to do it on four corners you put one you hook one here then you go to this end and then this corner and then this corner like north east south west north east south west and then in between you hook the in between stitches this way you will more or less get it even when you do it round you know and then after that you start off at the peg here you put an adjustable knot and then you knit the first two stitches then you purl and then you knit purl knit purl and then you'll end come back here it will be a purl two purl knit two and purl two and you knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches to get the knit two purl two rib you work this if you have any problems um, the video the chunky sweater that one has more detailed instructions you'll be able to see how the stitches are put on to the uh, this particular loom if you have any problems with that I used, decided to use the contrasting color, the light blue against the sea green. When you're working these, um, the neck part, uh, oh god, sorry. Now, when you're working the neck part, it's important for you to realize that um, you have to, won't be able to fit all the stitches in, you know. And when you see as it's coming out here you can see that it's coming out on the right side that's why the right side has to be facing you you know like this you see it's facing you when you hook the stitches on to the for 36 pack loom and remember you have to pick up the outer stitch yeah? because the inner stitch will form a ridge inside here if you pick up these inner stitches instead 
you pick up these inner stitches instead and hook them onto the pegs what will happen is that the outer stitches will form a ridge here you know and then it will be very very apparent and look quite ugly so this is why it's important when you're working the collar that you pick the right stitches to put on to the loom now as i told you before you have to knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches earlier we were doing a purl over when we were doing the heart stitch this is an actual purl eh? and I'm, I'm you know there are enough videos there out there to show you how to purl so this part you you know you can easily pick up like you know it's not something that i need to show you but i'm just because i wanted to explain to you about the neck so i just thought i'd do a bit of it while i'm explaining that i'll show you how to do the neck ah It's easier to use your thumb to push the stitch out and that way you can work this the pearl stitches a bit faster of course if you are pretty good at knitting you can actually pick up the stitches along the neck and this time you'll be able to pick all the stitches up and do a cowl but even then, I think you cannot really pick all the stitches up, you know, because then I think you'll have too many stitches on the neck. You'll have to skip some of the stitches, you know. That's why when I told you to put it on four corners, that is, um, well, that is uh, as far as, that means dividing the circle into quarters. And then that's why you put them on four corners so that you can evenly distribute the stitches out, you see. That's one good method of of even distribution of the neck stitches because otherwise you might not get a good um, stitch distribution once you've finished eight centimeters you cast off huh, and take it off i just wanted to point out something here when you work this um, collar as you can see here some of the stitches you can see because you have missed some of the stitches you know you be, won't be picking up every stitch <laughs> so if you don't want this to be very apparent but it won't be because you know the collar is very long you roll it down and it will cover this part but if you don't want even this imperfection you should use the same color that way you will not have this problem but if you're using the 22 inch loom this part of the uh, poncho will have stripes you know so in any case you will not be having one uniform color at the bottom unless of course you've done what i've done and had a one uh, color uh, border then if you have the one color border and you want to avoid this problem just use the same color for the collar see how long it is that's about eight inches when you finish the collar, when you do the cast off, uh, make sure that you don't make the cast off too tight. Eh? Otherwise, you won't be able to put your head through this when you um, join up the ends and finish the collar. Make sure you make this loose. Eh? Not too loose that it's hanging with large thread, but don't make it tight. You won't be able to put your head through the, the poncho. When you finish it, this is how it will look with the circular um, cowl and the design. I mean, depending on how you, whether you want a solid color or how you do it, you know, this is how it will look in the end.